Allahu Akbar. I would start with um, uh, that every one of us wants actually ha to be happy. And maybe he is doing a lot of issues and practices uh, intentionally or uh, unintentionally to make himself happy. Today, we want to come with some rules. And I really want everybody to memorize these rules. I am about pinpoints in order to be memorized. Some of these may be rules you, you have heard before, some you might not have heard before, but in this way, you might, if you write the, them down, if you try with me to memorize them, I guess it would help you a lot in this life and in the hereafter, as they are all from Quran and Sunnah. So how or what are the rules that we can really get this happiness? Rule number one, You won't be happy unless you make others happy. Say it again. You won't be happy unless you make others happy. How did this come or this rule come from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states the rule in Surah Al-Layl. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is saying that whoever gives first before anything gives and then have piety, taqwa and he is doing that giving out anticipating the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants it's only for the sake of Allah, nothing, nothing for himself, nothing to show off, nothing to get back from that beneficiary or anything. So that one, what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise him? فَسَنُوا يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Do you imagine how, how it is formed, these two words? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising the easy way for him to be huh, facilitated. So you're going to be actually, you're going to be from easiness to easiness. This is another way to state it. So, فَسَنُوا يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Allah would make your easy path easy for you, or easier, or would facilitate that easy path for you. Another verse in Surah An-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying also, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِّن ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحِيَّنَّهُ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ So whoever does good, and the top of every good, of course, is that what we are mentioning today, creating the happiness in the lives of others. And he is a believer from a male or female, and believing in that, and sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising him that he would have him lead a good, happy life. فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Rule number two. So rule number one again, you won't be happy unless you make others happy. Rule number two, إِنَّ فِي الدُّنْيَا Some of the salaf, righteous, our righteous ancestors, would say this rule in the dunya jannah man lam yadkhulha lam yadkhul jannat al akhirah so our this salaf people are saying that in this dunya there is jannah and you won't be able to enter the jannah of the akhirah unless you enter the jannah of the dunya so what is the jannah of the dunya if you are not be gonna enter the jannah of the akhirah except through this jannah of the dunya the jannah of the dunya of course is what imagine with me is your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your closeness, you, your happiness because you are attached with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are connected with the divine, with the source of the wahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. So imagine this happiness. If you, and, and the rule is saying that you won't enter Jannah of the Akhirah except you enter the Jannah of the Dunya, I meaning you build up this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please focus with me here. 
there is an obstacle between you, between you and this connection. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. That there is an obstacle. And you cannot reach to him subhanahu wa ta'ala without crossing that obstacle. It's not even just crossing. It's not an easy obstacle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Surah Al-Balad, so after he's saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us both ways, the righteousness and, the, and to become in the Dalala, he is saying that, that, saying that why would that human being would not take the step forward, strongly cross, break in that obstacle. Where? Where is that obstacle? It is yourself. Going, around, getting around, going outside the interests of yourself, your lusts, your desires, to other people, to serve others. So you, you, you prefer others on, on yourself sometimes. So this is the aqaba. And the, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, وَمَا أَدْرَكَ مَا الْعَقَبَةِ As if he wants also, he attracting your attention towards what is that obstacle? What's the nature of this obstacle? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then states it, Clearly, فَكُّ رَقَبَةٌ أَوْ إِطْعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ ذِي مَسْغَبَةٌ يَتِيمًا ذَا مَقْرَبَةٌ أَوْ مِسْكِينًا ذَا مَتْرَبَةٌ يَتِيمًا ذَا مَقْرَبَةٌ أَوْ مِسْكِينًا ذَا مَتْرَبَةٌ فَكُّ رَقَبَةٌ Which is emancipating a slave uh, person, which the scholars now are, are saying this also applies in someone who is unjustly put in jail and then you work uh, with paying an attorney or or uh, paying off his, his, the bill that he can come out. So this also applies there. And then helping the orphan. Uh, you give the food in a, in, a, in a time of famine or time, when, of, time of starvation. Or you serve also a yatim, an orphan, that preferably if he has a relation with you, and also miskin and damatraba, a poor guy who is actually damatraba means as if he is attached to the earth, to the earth out of the extreme poverty, to the dirt. So here is the dalil of what, what's this obstacle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you won't reach to him unless you cross and, and they would say break in. Falaqtahama means like you really demolish, destroy this obstacle. It is yourself. It is, it is not easy. And in Surah Al-Shams, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing 11 times the most ever types of, of oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give in the Quran is there. And then what's the actually answer of this oath? That qad aflaha man zakkaha, the one who is actually purifies himself is the one who is successful. And purification to the self is as you, you connect with the ayat, it doesn't come unless you also have this kind of mercy towards others and create the happiness in the lives of others. Also in Surah Al-Fajr, another dalil of this kind of connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not build up unless you serve and be kind and be merciful and create this happiness in the lives of others. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Fajr is saying, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانِ speaks about two types of people who do not actually uh, understand the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in creating things in, your, in, in their lives. Say if Allah subhanahu wa gives them ni'mah, they think that they are all right and they are happy and Allah is happy with me. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicts them, tests them with some affliction, then they would say Allah, subhanahu, Allah has disgraced me or dishonored me. So and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, kalla, the matter is not like this. Kalla, bal la al yatim. As if they are not acting generously towards the yatim, the orphan. And you're not calling one another, you're not advocating together the need of the, of the miskin. So as if the message here, one of the messages, that if you, are, are, if you guys are actually, of these people are, who are having this understanding, would act generously to these uh, categories of people who are deprived, who c would create the habits in, the, in their lives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless them with the right understanding. With the, they will be connected with Allah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, the moment that they will live for others, help others to understand what's the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going, uh, going there around them. Some people would have this affliction nowadays and now he, he doesn't know. The Salaf, if you read about them, some of them after 40 years would get something, some will, will be put in trouble and he will say, this is because I did so and so 20 years ago. 
20 years ago and he still remembers he did something and now he is come he's finding something because uh, something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he knows exactly where why it came to him so if you want to understand if you want to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understand the wisdom everything you, you uh, there in your life if this is a test or, or this is because something I have done, or this is what, here and there. So you'll be having this nur from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once you help others. This is rule number two. Rule number three, again, rule number two is um, the, the jannah of the dunya. If you did not enter the jannah of the dunya, be, and that is mean the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you won't enter the jannah of the akhirah. Rule number three, <clears throat> creating happiness in the lives of others, helping out others, satisfying, fulfilling the need of others is number one after Islam. Where did this, uh, this, this come from also? Uh, I have a story with Sheikh Sharawi. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and forgives him, showers him with the, with the mercy. Uh, someone approached him and asked him, what is the best thing ever I can do uh, to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to reach the highest levels in Jannah. And he said, uh, word in Arabic would say, Jabrul Khatir. Did, he told him, is it Salah? He said, no. Is it Zakah? Is it Siyam? Is it so and so? He said, no. He said, what is it? He said, Jabrul Khatir. Jabrul Khatir is actually when you bridge the uh, broken soul. You bridge someone who is broken. Someone who came to you and needs something and you have it and you give it to him so you satisfy his need, fulfill his need, then this is what Sheikh Sharawi means here. And he would bring, he quotes the ayat, Surah Al-Ma'un. Have you seen the one who belies the deen? So he's not speaking about the one who doesn't actually believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He speaks about those, فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُّ الْيَتِيمِ the one who acts, acts actually harshly towards a yatim. He's not generous enough. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking here for the bare minimum uh, uh, that you should, if you cannot give him help, money, something, at least you have to be generous and kind in treating with the orphans. And the same thing with the miskin. He is not advocating the need of the miskin. So it's the bare minimum fulfillment requirement. It's obligatory. It's mandatory that you are actually, if you see someone who is in need, that you, if you don't have money to give him, you should advocate. Then you have a role. Hey guys, come on. There is someone who is in need, who needs help out there, and let's help them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about those who think that prayer alone, without having these mandatory requirements, can save them and save awayilu lil musalleen. If you think salah is enough, it's going to get you there closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and higher in Jannah and you keep your money for yourself, your, your effort, your time from helping out others, then you are dreaming. Salah is not going to benefit you. Actually, it is there uh, built in in the verses saying that then your salah has a problem. If you live your, for yourself and you, you're not living to, to help others, then your salah has a problem. الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَعُونَ After this, وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَعُونَ Ending the, 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 the surah which is uh, actually entitled world with al ma'un which anything that can help al ma'un anything that can help others with so yura'un means they are showing off and they are withdrawing their hand their help from others so this is how they are much, so much connected that if you are having ibadah and you are not having this mandatory bare minimum level volunteerism going there helping if you cannot even afford money then you have to volunteer some time to advocate the need of the miskin and be there for the generous uh, kind of treatment for the orphans and those who are deprived. So rule number three again, anybody remembers that? Creating happiness or helping out others is number one after Islam. Rule number four and the last rule, people in need are the greatest door to Jannah. People in need are your greatest door to Jannah. And let me say here, I'm having a lot of evidences, but here, just quickly, Rasulullah when he mentions that the best ever deed you do after Fara'id is this happiness you enter in the lives 
or the, and the lives of a Muslim, another Muslim. And he would count a number of things that you can do, pay his debt, actually uh, fulfill his need regarding the issue, relieving him from a pressure, and, and so on. Uh, a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned that going uh, on the need of someone, of another one, that it is actually equals to uh, making i'tikaf in his masjid, sallallahu alayhi wa for a month. And another narration would say for a year. A third narration th says for 10 years. One month, imagine, I'm run out of time. So one month, and the i'tikaf is what? Fasting, Qur'an, Quran, Salah, everything. So just fulfilling a need of someone, this is how much you get out, as if you made i'tikaf where Masjid Rasulullah how much uh, the Salah equals there? 1,000, one rak'ah equals 1,000 rak'ah. For a whole month, you cannot, you can imagine. And then another hadith mentions i'tikaf one year. Third hadith mentions, mentions i'tikaf for 10 years. And that is depends on what? In the way actually what's there in your, uh, in your heart regarding that. Uh, some hadith mentions يَفْرَحُ لِقَضَائِهَا You are happy when you are actually fulfilling that need of that, of that person. And another hadith mentioned, حَتَّى يُثْبِتَهَا له. So I am there with him until I actually make sure that he got his need and I witness his happiness. Uh, actually, one of the doctors here in, in this area, in Virginia area, actually who donated five uh, micro homes uh, for the families who are actually in the desert. Of, some Syrians are living in a very bad uh, condition, tents. He actually gave these five caravans to them, and not only that, when he was going for Umrah, he came, and he said, I want to go myself to some families. And he took him to a number of where he gave a good amount of money to, to some families, and he was so extremely happy after he witnessed himself the happiness of these people uh, uh, there. Uh, again and again, I, I actually had a story, but no time for it. Uh, hopefully, inshallah, another time I can give it. I have another session. Maybe tomorrow I can share it with you, inshallah. Uh, in one of the sub-sessions. Here is the rules one more time, just for your memory, uh, if you want to record them. Number one, you won't be happy unless you make others happy. And, and I have provided the evidences for that. And uh, the second rule that there is Jannah in this dunya, you want, if you want to enter this Jannah in the dunya, means your relation to, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you won't enter the Jannah of the Akhirah. The third one is creating happiness, uh, helping out others, in the lives, uh, happiness in the lives of others and helping them out is number one after Islam. Number four, people in need are your greatest door to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and help us all be uh, always at the need of others and uh, leave something in this life before we just leave it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill all your needs and make you go home, inshallah, bless, blessed from this beautiful gathering. Jazakumullah khayr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.